It is of vital importance to know the dynamics of demons in this world. Most Christians try to shut this subject out of their lives. The Bible, however, is loud and clear on this subject. Whenever there is a demon, it needs to be cast out. If the demon is within you, it needs to be cast out by someone or through self-deliverance if the Spirit of God reveals this to you. Jesus, go out into the world and share the good news with all of creation. Anyone who believes this good news and is ceremonially washed will be rescued. But anyone who does not believe it will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe they will be able to cast out demons in my name. Speak with new tongues. Take up serpents, drink poison without being harmed, and lay their hands on the sick to heal them. After the Lord Jesus had charged the disciples in this way, he was taken up into heaven and seated at the right hand of God. The disciples went out proclaiming the good news, and the risen Lord continued working through them. The Lord Jesus makes it clear that signs will follow those that believe. Those that believe is very key. This promise is not for those who doubt. These promises are not for those who disbelieve. Not for those who constantly deny such possibility and use every excuse of unbelief to evade doing these things. Demons can also be found in areas of residence that children of God dwell in, or found in the artifacts that are in our homes, that attract them, or that originated from them. In the scripture of reference that we referred to earlier, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, casts out a legion of demons, which went to take residence in the pig. Demons, when cast out, can take residence in a weaker vessel, your home may be an option for them and can become a home of residence for demons cast out elsewhere because the Bible says that according to Matthew 12, 43 through to 45, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. We understand that demons are in dire need of shelter, accommodation, and can inhabit anything. This is why there are haunted houses, these are simply manifestations of demonic activity. I bring you good news today that all these devils can be cast out in the name of Jesus. Do not be afraid. You can be delivered, and your home can be delivered too. Let us see the narrative we mentioned earlier in context. Mark 5, 1 and 2. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs of a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus meets a man living in the tombs with a demon. A demon is an unclean spirit, or a foul spirit. It behaves uncleanly, just like its name, and you have to have disconcernment to notice this. Demons disregard the notion of boundaries and demarcations, having been cast out into the pigs, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. The demons were left in the sea, which also opens another world of sea demons, or water demons, as the pigs were choked in the water. Where did the demons go after that? A subject matter for another day. Beware of demons. Christ says, Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8, As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Drive out demons. 
Brothers and sisters, wherever you are, Jesus found the demon in this man and cast it out. Acts 19, 18 And many that believed came, and confessed, and shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts, brought their books together, and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them, and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God, and prevailed. This demonic activity in the community is contemporarily explained in one version this way. Everyone was shocked and realized that the name of Jesus was indeed powerful and praiseworthy. As a result, a number of people involved in various occult practices came to faith. They confessed their secret practices and rituals. Some of them had considerable libraries about their magic arts. They piled up their books and burned them publicly. Someone estimated the value of the books to be 50,000 silver coins. Again, word spread, and the message of the Lord overcame resistance and spread powerfully. All occult practices are demonic. It is in the name of Jesus that deliverance comes through. Jesus drives out demons. Faith in his name enables this to happen. Just to help a believer who is practicing or is involved in demonic activity through lack of teaching or understanding. Occultists seek to access secret or hidden information about the future through soothsaying, divination. Among the most common tools of the soothsayer are tarot cards, astrological charts, horoscopes, and tea leaves. The Lord's command is emphatic and explicit about such demonic activity. Beware of such as a child of God. The Holy Spirit is revealing to you areas that are in your life that you need to pay attention to. These are gates that you opened for whatever reason Jesus is ready to deliver you. Let this narrative in the book of Acts 13 about Elymas the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, help us to understand more. Acts 13, 6 through to 11. Now when they had gone through the island of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with this proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now, indeed, the hand of God is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Demons can basically be classified and described in the way Paul addressed the sorcerer. Full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Demons are deceitful. Their activity may seem innocent when there is no discernment of the Holy Spirit. Demons are all fraud and their activity may seem innocent when there is no discernment of the Holy Spirit. Demons are of the devil. Their activity may seem innocent when there is no discernment of the Holy Spirit. Demons are enemies of righteousness. Their activities may seem innocent when there is no discernment of the Holy Spirit. Demons pervert the straight ways of God. Their activity may seem innocent when there is no discernment of the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. There shall be no found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughters pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out before you. 
participation in all these demonic activities is an abomination unto the Lord. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. This is the ultimate function of the devil, and as well as demons, because they help him accomplish his agendas. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and he can't accomplish this alone except by the assistance of the demons. Without a doubt, the devil is aware that every life is endowed with great potentials, so he wants to fight it at all costs. In conclusion, do not ever get involved in anything divining, such as predicting fortunes, interpreting omens, sorcery, casting spells, or trying to contact ghosts, spirits, or the dead. God Almighty is horrified when anyone does these things, but still claims to be a child of God. God bless you.